Lurkers come to join the party. Oh, but you do get around, don't you? He takes a satisfied sniff and rubs his hands together. His lips stretch into a mischievous smirk. When it comes to graveyards, I'm a kid in a candy shop. All sorts of goodies and gewgaws for the taking. And a bit of rousing conversation. If you know where to dig, that is. Ah, it's a quandary, you see. I'm not exactly welcome in the stone garden. The servants attend the graves well. Their master, this Riker fellow, caught me nosing around, so he had them chase me off. The spirits within are particularly feisty as well. Can't say why. I'm as gentle as can be. Alas, I'm stuck sniffing out herbs and fungi on the outskirts. He presses a forefinger against his chin and hums. This is when having access to a godwoken might come in handy. You see, beyond the gates there's something that my heart, such as it is, is set on. Well, that's the gold-plated question it is. I dare say you'll enjoy this story. Somewhere in this graveyard lies an object of tremendous power. Or so the legends say, anyway. Belonged to a family buried near here, the Surreys. I've been reading up on them. An ancient clan of eccentrics and oddballs. Fascinating people, truly. Old Joanna was the last. The poor, poor, poor dear. Had no money, no children. Just this incredible heirloom passed down to her through the generations. Problem is, no one knows what this object is. Only that it's an astounding piece of work. Seems Joanna took its secrets to her grave. Rather literally. His coy grin freezes. I can recite each page from memory, but I've neither the time nor the inclination. Tarquin sighs and his lips unfreeze. For a moment he looks almost modest. It pains me to say, but you've talents in the adventuring department that I do not. This heirloom could prove valuable for both of us. Beautiful. The Surrey too must be somewhere nearby. And whatever that object is in there, I bet it's impressive. He looks toward the graveyard. I do wish I could wander inside. It would be nice to look up some old friends. See if they're in good spirits. The dead here stir. I hear their whispers. Ah, fasten tight. Let's see what spirits haunt this garden. You recognize the dog from the town square in Driftwood. The wounds from his spiked collar are healing well. Oh, hi! How are you? I'm good. Hey, do you smell that? It smells like the fish place, doesn't it? Like fish, only uh, worse. Okay, bye! Human graves. Let's hope none are earmarked for me. Careful, I've spotted a trap. Human graves. Their lives are so. Careful now, fleet, that's a trap. If graves you dig, I'll warn you now. Beware the creak and then the click. Then comes the bang, then comes the bang! <laughs> Close your eyes and listen. The spirit's memories play out before you in darkest black. The sound alone relates the tale. A self-styled archaeologist, some would call you a grave robber, you found the grave of Baron Wilmart Hogg IV. Your footsteps crunch light upon the gravel as you approach the tomb. You know that Hogg was avaricious, paranoid and cruel, and you yourself value the first of these two traits most highly. You ease your way up to the grave and run your hand around the lid, searching for a trap. You find nothing. The wind whispers in the trees and the grass rustles quietly. You slide the lid open with a creak. Click. Uh-oh, you think. Bang. The silence of the night is rent with a sound of screaming. You're screaming as you burn to death. 
Commiserations, she says. I knew the risks. If graves, you know, beware the creep. And then the click. Then comes the bang. Then comes the bang. <laughs> I have only one regret. I didn't get the loot. I didn't get the loot. First came the creak, and then the click, then came the bang, then came the bang! <laughs> creak, click, bang! Careful <laughs> now, that's a trap. Hi, the track. Sinner I, and who is not? The sinner lies that they sin not. The sinner lies. And yet the boneyard's full of sinners who got their prayers, while I did not. The lizard hums tunelessly, not a melody exactly, but more of a meandering moan. Ten spans under humans slept, ten spans up the dwarves were kept. Lizards burned in lasting flame, elven trees toward skies did aim. She looks to your left with one eye, and to your right with the other. It helps me remember. Remember where the dead go. Sometimes they don't stay where I put them. That's okay. She smiles at you with the innocence of a newborn. The hum still throbs in her throat. Keeping watch, tending the graves. She returns to her humming. She flinches as you move closer. No, no touching. Her humming fades. The eerie silence lasts for several seconds. Riker might get mad. He doesn't like it when someone touches his things. She shivers and whispers. Powerful sorcerer. Lives here, right in the garden. He can take the you from you. No brain, just body. She points at her head. The servants. They got nothing up there. Riker has it all now. They need to be freed. Only way. Kill Riker. The servants, so lost, chained by sorcerer Riker, but they can still go home to the hall. Set them free. The ensuing silence lasts for several seconds, until she picks up the melody once again and turns away. Body here, only a pile of rocks. Faked his own death, did he? That's one way to avoid debtor's prison. had a glint in your eye for old Zimski. Don't abandon me now. Zimski mutters to himself as he traces sigils in the dirt. He spies you, and a shrewd look brightens his eyes. He stretches out a hand, showing you a solitary coin on his palm. Heads or tails? He flips the coin high in the air. It twinkles beneath the moonlight as it spins down, and he claps it to his forearm. It's tails. 
Unlucky. But then what do I know about luck anymore? All my life I served Lady Luck and see how it ends. In the dirt, just the same as everybody else. Turning from you, he crouches back to the dirt. He resumes tracing esoteric sigils, his fingertips swirling through the graveyard clay. Her signs, the caller. Oh, Lady Luck always came when I called. For 30 years we roamed Rivalon together. She was my faithful mistress, from card game to wager to grift. She was the life of me. Yet she wants no dead man. Now I cannot influence even a coin toss. But you breathe. I'll wager you've more use for my gifts than I do. Here, tell me what you truly value. If my lady sees fit, I'll give you what I truly value in return. Good enough. He smiles a foxy smile as he stabs claw-like fingers at your chest. He begins to trace sigils on your flesh. Though you cannot feel his fingers upon your skin, something inside you shifts. You feel a coldness, and a sick longing seeps into your heart. He croons incantations as he works, and his voice is like the throwing of a thousand dice inside your brain. Your body is suddenly filled with lust for coin, and craving for more. Ah, uh, now you feel her touch. Now Lady Luck sings in your blood as she once did in mine. And now, I feel nothing. The masked creature is mute, save the occasional moan. At first glance, the spirit seems much like its host, hollow, detached. Yet, in its eyes, you see something more ominous, something not apparent before, agony. The spirit nods, and its face grows even more tortured. It is trapped. By what or by whom, you cannot say. The spirit's as haunted as the graveyard it roams. The dog growls and bares its teeth at you in a wide, unsettling grin. You swear you see a worm emerge from its grey-pink gums, then burrow back in. Come closer. I dare you. He sniffs. He snarls. <sighs> I am death. There's no defying me. The dog's growls intensify and transform into a rhythmic rasp that mimics laughter. You swear you see the ground behind him momentarily churn and tremble. Yes, it is as I said. I am death. Flesh decays, but bones... Bones dance for me. And do I warn, not one step further. I know what you want here. But Kana's already laid claim to it. Ha! She calls herself Master. I call her Minion. Whatever name you choose, it is her hand that will wield it, not yours. The dog raises its head to the stormy sky and howls. The earth beneath you vibrates, a dirge plucked on the strings of a rotting lute. Necrotic Tron, you are some. Crawl through the gate, the earth opens for thee.
space between us and this lunatic! <laughs> his head around, gawking at the ground and sky as if he'd never seen them before. Then, locks his eyes on yours. He snarls, unconvincingly. Uh, I am... I am death! Yes! The masses tremble at the Necrohound's might! We will retrieve Anathema! Our enemies will bow before the demon blade! He moves to lick his haunches, and seems taken aback by his own translucence. Once a demon, now a weapon. We heard its call, and slayed our allies in its name. It is near. With it, we will slay living and undead alike. There will be no mercy. The canine spirit lifts his head to howl, but can barely manage a whimper. He tucks his tail between his legs, shocked at his own impotence. The air itself's been petrified. At first, you might think the figure is a simple stone statue, but it bears no chisel marks, no uneven surfaces, no signs of polishing. This is a petrification victim. The petrified woman cannot speak, but her eyes glow with the fury of the sun. Oh, isn't this rich? Cursed by a coffin and rescued by a random rube. The indignity. She huffs in annoyance and rolls her eyes. Oh, all this trouble and for nothing. Never figured I'd need frost armor. A mutt? Oh, girl, he's no mutt any more than I'm a maiden. Oh, but do forgive me. I haven't expressed proper gratitude. She bows in insincere reverence. Her arm rests on her back, hand mere inches from her staff. She goes silent, momentarily willing to let you go free, then rises from her bow and grips you by the shoulder. Oh, honey, anathema is out there, and I'm not keen on competition if you get my drift. A jolt of cursed fire flares from her staff. Especially me.
spirit's lip curls upwards. She opens her mouth as if to speak, but her words fade in the tomb's chill. The longer you gaze, the more your inner source churns. You are drawn into her, her mind, her body, her past. They are no longer hers, but yours. You sit at a fire. At your left lies a black dog basking in the warmth. Others huddle behind you. A young elf, a grizzled dwarf, and a... an undead. You hold a parchment up to the light and point at it. It is there, there that anathema can be found. The sky is dark, and the roaring fire is now a sad flicker. The others lie around it in a circle, but you hear no snores. Their chests neither rise nor fall, their eyelids never twitch. You look to your left, the dog's yellow eyes lock with yours, and the two of you turn from the ring of corpses. And you gasp as you are thrust into the present. You take a few deep heaves, then glance at the spirit. Her mouth continues to gabble, but you're grateful that only silence reaches your ears. Uh, won't budge. is gated off from the rest. Whoever is buried here must have been important. Here rests the lizard hero Vidya. She served Lucy and the Divine with great dignity and vanquished the strange beasts that arose from the primordial caverns of Reaper's Coast. The implements of her heroism shall rest at the site of her victory. Here rests the dwarven hero Bromley. She served Lucy and the Divine with honor and cast out the demons that plagued the great woodlands. The implements of her heroism shall rest at the site of her victory. Here rests the elven hero Halla. He served Lucy and the Divine with great vigor and defended the farmers who feed Reaper's Coast against pitiless bandits. The implements of his heroism shall rest at the site of his victory. Here rests the human hero Garrick. He served Lucy and the Divine with immense skill and slew the necromancers who preyed upon the dead of Stone Garden Cemetery. The implements of his heroism shall rest at the site of his victory. Suddenly, the earth churns and buckles upwards in several places. Something, some things, are trying to rise to the surface. God Woken, you must fall. The God King demands it. You must fall, so that we may rise. Let your blood quench our roots so we may grow. The covenant shall be fulfilled.
strike me now. I am sworn.
heroes? What happened to them? And what's this covenant? The heroes of Driftwood lie at your feet. Dead for good this time. I can't look at them. It's like someone's trod over my own grave. They spoke of a covenant. What could that mean? 